Hi, I'm Jay Gordon. I'm a developer advocate here at MongoDB, and I'm at MongoDB World. It's Developer Advocacy Day. We're having a great talk, uh, a great number of talks, I should say. And one of the people who's going to be closing out our day is Brandy Morgan. How are you What's feeling, up? Brandy? Feeling good, feeling good. Awesome. She's going to be doing a talk about discovering your influence, and uh, hopefully this video will help me discover mine. So we'll see you soon. Awesome. to finalize today with someone that we are very happy to have. Uh, this is Brandy, and Brandy is going to have a conversation with you today about how to discover your influence. Um, so, why don't we all give her a quick round of applause. Hi everybody, my name is Brandy Morgan, like he said, and my mission for the next 15 or so minutes is to showcase the importance of social media and influence and also to show you guys how to utilize it within your communities. So first, what is an influencer? Ooh, this goes fast. <laughs> okay. An influencer is somebody that has the ability to affect um, purchasing decisions from a group of people, whether that's from their reputation, authority, knowledge, or their relationship with his or her audience. A lot of times we think of influencers as the Kardashians or supermodels that we see on Instagram because of the products that they show us and they want us to buy. But that's not the case. There are influencers in every single category, including tech. The types of influencers. There are the celebrity influencers. <coughs> These are the Kim Kardashians. And then we have our industry experts and our thought leaders. Think of Elon Musk or maybe Mark Zuckerberg. Then we have our bloggers and content creators. These are the ones that have millions and millions of subscribers and followers on YouTube, Instagram, and on their blogs. But then we have our micro-influencers. These are your normal, everyday people like you and me. But these people have a sizable following on social media, usually around a particular niche or industry. But it's not just about the followers. It's about the interaction that these micro-influencers have. They're engaging with their followers on a daily basis through liking or commenting on posts. So meet me, Miss Brandy Morgan. I'll give you guys all a few seconds to take out your phones to follow me <laughs> on Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, Snapchat, YouTube, LinkedIn, and Musical.ly. I would be considered a micro-influencer. Here's a photo that I posted, I don't know, maybe a month ago, highlighting that I was coming here to MongoDB World. I'm asking my audience what they think about MongoDB, if they've ever used it, and what they've built with it. This photo, within the matter of 24 hours, got over 1,400 likes, 109 comments, and 48 saves. You're probably familiar with likes and comments. But a save is when somebody saves your photo, usually to repost on their page. The rectangle, you can see that I got almost 300 interactions. This means that almost 300 people went to my profile because of this picture. 18 of those people clicked the link, which was to buy tickets. The very last oval is the discovery. That is how many times did this picture appear? It appeared over 11,000 times in 11,000 unique Instagram feeds. And this is because of the saving. So when somebody saves your photo and reposts it, it then gets shared to their audience who probably isn't following you. Therefore, <coughs> expanding your reach and audience. So, the future of influencers is actually the micro-influencer. Why is this important? Over 3 billion people 
actively use social media every single day. That's 40% of the world's population. And the iGen or Gen Z, whatever you want to call them, they are the future. These are our future developers. These are the future users and creators of the products that we're building and using today. These kids, the iGen, they're immersed in technology every single day, whether that's through gameplay with their friends or lectures in the classroom. But unfortunately, our education system can't keep up, which is where you come in. You guys all have the ability to become a micro-influencer in the world of tech and especially in development. Because last year there was 1.3 million open software jobs. And between the time that that statistic came out, there's been over half a million more. So it is estimated that there will be around 2 million open software development jobs by 2020. This is the future developer. This is the future user and revenue earner for your company. So it is your job to be painting the picture of what it looks like to be in tech and what it looks like to be a developer. And let's talk about how you're gonna do that. The first step is, who the heck are you? What is it about you that you want to showcase the world? Think of it the same way you would think of a product. You go after a particular niche and you nail that first and then you're going to widen your net. When I was starting off, I branded myself around React Native. I started creating all sorts of YouTube videos trying to teach people React Native because there wasn't any content out there because it was new. So these four videos got around 10,000 views. I knew I was onto something. So I had to continue to find my audience, which is step number two. You need to find your audience, what platforms they're using, and what sort of content they're engaging in. I went to Instagram, Twitter, and YouTube. This is where the rest of the React Native lovers were at the time. And it wasn't just finding those platforms. It was researching these people. What type of content did they like? What were they engaging with? What were they sharing with their followers? Which is step number three, content. You need to be creating content every single day for every single one of these platforms. Here is my YouTube, Instagram, and Twitter. I have created over 150 videos on YouTube in the past year, hundreds of Instagram posts and videos, and a lot of tweets. My YouTube has received 83,000 views in the past year, my Instagram is in the millions, and Twitter almost 175,000 impressions, which is part number two. If you create content and nobody sees it, doesn't really matter. The same thing if you build a product and nobody uses it. Doesn't matter. You need to be creating content that is searchable. And how you do this on all platforms is through keywords, whether you're using them in tags or hashtags on your posts. And like I said, you don't know who is seeing them. I got invited to teach a React Native workshop in Toronto, Canada early last year because of somebody seeing my videos and my Twitter that therefore expanded my audience and reach to Canada. I was also invited to speak with a girls coding camp about the importance of women in tech and programming. This may look familiar to you guys. If anybody was at MongoDB World last year, they had these awesome stairs, which I'm bummed they don't have them. I took this photo and I tweeted it and posted it all over, really hoping to get the attention of MongoDB because I wanted to work with them. Which is step number four, collaborate. 
You need to reach out to these companies, these experts, these thought leaders, and ask to work with them. You can do this through guest blogging. This is a very traditional way of getting your message out there, but you can guest blog for somebody like Cyber Discovery. They send you questions, you answer them. But my favorite is doing lives. I think that might be on here. Um, is doing live interviews, whether that's YouTube, Instagram, or Facebook. It's super simple. All you do is turn your camera on and start engaging with the other person. But my most favorite collaboration was with Mr. JavaScript himself, John Papa. I got invited to go hang out with the rest of the Microsoft developers and talk about React State. Super simple, I showed up, answered questions, they edited and created the video, therefore expanding my reach to Microsoft followers. But the catalyst to all of this is engagement. If you want any of these things to happen with your brand or your company, you need to be engaging with your audience. This is liking and commenting. Here is a prime example. Ryan Carson is the founder of Treehouse. It's a learning platform. I started following him on Instagram. What? I work here. Oh. <laughs> Yeah. Ken, right? Yeah. <laughs> so I started following him on Instagram. If you don't follow him, you should. He posts great content. So Ryan Carson is a founder and CEO of Treehouse, an online learning platform that teaches people how to code. Well, I followed him, started engaging with him. And two weeks later, I post this picture of me talking about creating a React Native tutorial. He comments, Glad I discovered you. More women should be showcasing their talent in tech. I respond, wow, that means so much coming from a thought leader like yourself. Let me know if Treehouse ever needs help creating content. That led to me creating the introduction to React Native that lives and breathes on Treehouse today. If you're interested, you can go check it out and tweet at me your feedback. Because when you start creating influence, you don't know where it can lead, and you don't know all the people that are going to be affected by it. Now this is an ugly, ugly slide, I know. But the reason why you do influence and you create content is because it impacts the future generation of developers, the future people that are going to be using your guys' products and services. Also, companies that need recruiting whether that's developers or marketers or anybody, if you do it well enough and you create influence around your brand and your company, there is no reason why you shouldn't have people lined up out the door wanting to work there. Also, awesome events like MongoDB World. Super fun. <laughs> and there's financial gains. If you're already creating content, why not get paid for it, right? And lastly, build a network. Your network is your net worth, and it is invaluable. Thank you, and if you guys have any questions, check out creatorscode.co, which is an online learning platform for social media. Thank you. Yeah, other questions? <laughs> so, um, thank you so yeah. much. Let's give Brandy one more.